What up guys, how's it going? We are continuing on the Flutter app development series. We're going to be talking about page view widgets in this video. Without any further ado, let's begin. Start off with, we're going to talk about what are the page view basics. Page views are nothing but they're technically scrollable lists, more like list views that we saw. Uh, instead of having a list of things, you're going to have a list of pages. So it's going to mirror a page like a widget in the app. You can just scroll it up and down or scroll it left and right and it's going to occupy the entire viewport meaning that it's going to occupy the entire application now uh, it is very handy in terms of creating faster pages and also it can support any type of child so it is no that is there is no particular widget or any particular uh, special widgets that it has to support there are three ways, ways to create the page views starting off uh, we have the page view constructor then we have the page view dot builder and the page view dot custom if you have followed me on the list view video, you must find it very, very similar because list view also follows the same method of creating using these three methods. And you're going to talking about that and comparison method. You're going to create how you're going to see how the page views are actually created. All right. As always, I have the skeleton ready. I actually used the written the wide main method and I put the scaffold widget in place. First thing we're going to talk about is how to create the page using the constructor. The constructor is very simple. You can directly going to call the page view class and it's going to make use of a lot of properties inside which you're going to see in the rest of the video. So page view is directly going to be calling this. Uh, the next method is the page view dot builder. So what is builder is going to do? We directly going to use dot builder and it's going to directly call an item builder. Item builder is nothing but what should we do inside this item builder is nothing. It's going to create an it's going to create a dynamically create a page and you're going to directly say that you can use the context and position so we're gonna say these are the two methods two variables that it needs and we can directly use that another important attribute of item builder is nothing but the item count so item count is nothing but how many pages should they create without putting a lot of effort we are going to builder method if you remember from the list view method, list view video it is because we do not have to manually create say 100 100 pages we don't have to do that instead of doing that you can directly go using the page view builder tell what what type of page every page should look like and directly give the count say 100 count so you're going to create 100 pages with the same property as you are going to give it an item builder we can actually make a lot of modifications saying that every second page should look like this and every third page should look like this and that is that is all going to be inside the page view builders item builder attribute third method to do is actually the page view dot Page view custom. Custom again is going to take a children delegate. If you remember from the sliver app bar video that is made previously before to this video, you can actually understand that children delegates are nothing but they are actually sliver widgets. So you directly have to go in give up sliver widget to say for example I'm going to give a sliver child delegate list and it's going to take in a list of children. You can directly give in any sliver widget you want. You can actually go to give uh, say list type. So the list style is nothing but we are saying that give it a list of list of tiles and it it can actually make custom animations to it. That is the main main use of Sliver Child Delicate. And that is how we are going to create uh, these three methods to do the page view. The main used methods are page view constructor to directly do one say couple of pages or only three pages less number of pages. We are going to directly go for the constructor. And if you directly want to have 100 and 150 pages dynamically created, you are going to use the builder method. Custom methods are actually custom is going to be not very much used in, unless you have a very animated uh, page that you want to show to the user, you can do that. My bet is always on going to be on builder method if I'm going to do direct dynamic creation and constructor method in order to do one or two pages. Next thing I'm going to do is actually check out what are the different properties that page view widget itself has. It's going to have a lot of properties that are common to all the three methods and you're going to see that in the next section. All right. So the important properties that we're going to talk about with respect to page use and also with respect to all the three methods are uh, the first one is the scroll direction. Second is the page snapping physics on page changed and controller. We are not technically talking about the two important attributes that we saw in, in term in case of page view dot builder and one attribute that we saw in case of page view dot custom that does not cover the entire page views methods because these five are going to be the common to all the all three methods okay jumping back to the example that we have in hand 
we are going to technically define the scroll view first you know before we do that we're going to directly go in and create some content into the into our page view right so we can actually use a container and container is going to have a child and i'm going to say center of let me create a child and it's going to have a full text text is going to say page one and next thing is going to be color i'll just call it colors dot red accent great you can actually do this again you can actually create another container this time you just change color and name you call it page two let it be blue accent great we just run the application and by the main time it runs we are going to directly uh, do the next attribute that we want to see which is actually the scroll direction Scroll direction is actually going to take the class of axis. Axis is going to say which, is it going to be a horizontal axis or is it going to be a vertical axis? Let me call it vertical. Okay, so this as well and run. Let's see what happens. Alright, so the application is up and running. We have the page one, uh, which page view, page views page one. When I've actually given the scroll direction of vertical, so what I'm going to do is try to swipe it vertically and it's going to go up and try to swipe it down it's going to come down there is no action to the right and left because we cannot do that and that is how the page view dot vertical or page view scroll direction is going to be used next attribute is going to be the page snapping attribute what it does it is going to directly tell the uh, pages that we have actually to do not snap into position by default it's going to be two so when you're doing the scroll up it's going to snap second page is going to snap and up into the position but if you set it to false it is not going to snap unless you cross the entire width with the height, it's not going to scroll. We can directly see that in action. I'm going to say it's page snapping set to false. And when you run the application, this application is up and running. So when you do that, you can see it is not going to snap. The second page is not going to snap until the user scrolls the entire thing up. So I'm, until I'm scrolling the entire thing up, it's not going to, and the second page is not going to come. And that is how the page snapping is going to be. By default, it's going to set to true. So whenever you do this, when you do the scroll, it's directly going to do that. And, uh, and that is what the use of page snapping is. The third attribute is going to be the physics. What physics does is that when you're scrolling the pages, when you reach the end, there is going to be some indication to say that this is the end of the page. This is the end of the list that's itself. So the page physics is going to do that for you. There are a lot of different physics that are available in Flutter, say a bounce physics or a clamping physics. Uh, what it exactly tells you is that how should the scrolling behavior do when the user swipes it. So we can directly check how it actually is going to work. I have a lot of bounce physics. You can actually type in physics and it's not a complicated for you. Uh, let me do bouncing scroll physics. I can show that in action for you as well. Alright, so the app is up. So what we are trying to see is that when you do a fast scroll, we do see that it's bouncing. Actually, you can better see it when you set it to set your uh, it's nothing false. It's false. So when you set page snapping to true, it is going to try to scroll the entire list faster, and that is when you can see the bounce physics properly. I think application is up. So when you're trying to do this, So did you see the bounce? That is what the bounce physics bounce, bounce physics process is gonna do. When you are setting it for some other physics, say clamping, no no, I did it. Clamping for physics, what is it going to do? Nothing. Great. So what it's gonna do is when you try to do the same action. Even when I pull it down, nothing is happening. It is clamping up and saying that this is the end of the page. And that's how the physics is written. Like you can see when I'm trying, trying to do physics, it's auto filling for a lot of possible properties, a fixed extent, never scrollable scroll, clamping, or this scrollable. And all of these are properties of uh, this is physics. Flutter has a lot of them. You can check them out and experiment with, with that in your application. All right, the fourth property is going to be the on page changed. What does it do? It is actually going to fire up and give you the page number 
of what page is actually showing on the screen. It is going to fire up whenever you do the page swipe and you can actually see it in action using this example. All right, so you can directly go on page change, it's going to take the value. Like I said, an integer value. So whenever the page is going to be changed, you can actually try and print it. Let's say page number is and number dot string. It's going to be an integer value. You have to change it to string. Save the application and run it. What it's going to do is I'll show something interesting with this. Okay, so the page one here is the page one. You have set the page snapping to false. So and I'm trying to do this. So it's whenever the page one comes into view, this on page change fire. So even when you are even half, it is not still not fire. When it comes to view, now it is fire. So when you go more than half, it's going to be fire. But when you set it true, it is going to be the same. So it's going to say as soon as the page comes into view, it's going to get fire. You can see that in action as well. So we have the page one for us it's page one but in terms of arrays and you know the concept so it's going to be zero page and when you are doing the full swipe now it's page one so it's going to swipe the second page for us and which is nothing but the second page the array of pages and that is how the page on page change works you can do a lot of things with it you can actually uh, call another uh, another method based on the page numbers and uh, we're going to see another important attribute or important callback in terms of controllers, which is also actually going to support this. The fifth attribute is going to be the controller attribute. What does controller do? It is going to give the entire control of the pages to you. As a developer, you can actually call this controller from anywhere. And as soon as you have given the controller as some attribute in terms of page controller, you can actually control the pages from outside. What I'm trying to say is that uh, let's remove this for now. And OK, it's going to be good. We're directly going to call the controller attribute and it's going to take a page controller, like I said. You have to define define the page controller outside. Let me define it outside. Great. So we're gonna give this controller that same attribute. And what we're gonna do is, uh, as soon as the page changes, we actually fire up and see what is controller say. So we'll say page changed. It's going to be a number like hashtag attribute page changed. So what you're going to do is you're going to print controller. You're going to call the controller. It's going to have a lot of positions, a lot of attributes. It's going to have a position. It's going to have notify listeners. It has debug label attributes related to whatever pages is on the screen. And I'm going to call the position. And let's see what it prints. Okay. All right, so the first page is up when I'm trying to scroll it. You can see the amount of information it has about the page. All of this is under the position attribute of the controller and it gets printed as soon as you do that. Okay, I'm going to make it a bit tricky now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say controller dot. I'm going to do is I'm going to say jump to page. So I'm going to jump and then I'm trying to jump to the second page that is by arrays, it's going to be number one. We are not going to allow you to do that. So we are just going to call and then whenever, whenever I am trying to jump, just go back to zero. So when I am trying to swipe to one, I am asking you to go back to zero. Let's see in action. Okay, so I am here. I am trying to swipe it. You see that it is jumped back to zero. It jumped back to zero, and that is how the controller can be. You can actually use this controller attribute from outside also, and do any type of control you want on the pages that are actually viewable to the user, or in short, whatever is in the viewport is actually in the controller attribute, and you actually use that to manipulate. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. We saw how our page views constructor, which are the three methods and also the five important attributes that are part of the page views. I hope you like this video. Do not forget to give it a like. If you have any comments on it, you can put it in the comment section below. And also do not forget to subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be talking more on Flutter and other programming languages. Okay guys, that's it for now. Let me meet you in another video. Have a good day.